Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to practice determining whether an element is in a given set. The first example we're going to start with, we're going to let capital A represent the set containing A, B, C, and D. Those are all lowercase. And we're going to let capital B represent the set containing 2, 3, 4, and 5. We're going to determine whether the given element is in the set. And we're going to fill in the blank with either this elongated E or this elongated E with a line through it. The symbol on the left represents is an element of, and as you might guess, the symbol on the right means is not an element of. So part A, we are going to determine if lowercase a is or is not an element in the set A. So remember the set A we were told is equal to lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c, lowercase d. So we're being asked is little a inside that set and we can see that yes it is an element of the set. So the solution to this question would be to put the is an element of symbol. Now let's look at part b. For part b we're asked if negative 2 is an element of the set b. Well the set b contains 2, 3, 4, and 5. We were told that in the instructions. 2 is not the same as negative 2. There is no negative 2 in this set. So we would say negative 2 is not an element of B. Let's try part C. So you're going to see a couple like this in your MyLabs homework. So here we have uh, 10. We want to know if it's the el an element of this set. And one of the things we're trying to test here is if you realize that these commas are very important. Anytime we use the listing method to designate a set, we have to put a comma in between each of the elements. And it's only by those commas that we know what's an element and what's not. For example, it would be different if there were a couple more commas in here, this set would be the set containing 13, negative 3, 9, negative 4, 6, and negative 5 but there aren't commas in there. So instead, there are only three elements in this set. The first element, 13 minus three is 10. The second element, nine minus four is five. And the third element, six minus five is one. So we could have written this set as 10 comma five comma one with the curvy brackets. So is 10 an element of that set? It absolutely is, we see it right there. So we're going to say yes, 10 is an element of this set. Now this next one is maybe a little trickier. It says is 2 an element of the set containing the set A and the set B? So I bet you didn't realize that sets can be elements of other sets. This is a set of sets. We could have written this particular set of sets as the set containing and then instead of A, we could have written A comma B comma C comma D comma and then the set containing two, three, four, five instead of the B there. So again, notice how I have this comma here separating one element from the other. For the purposes of this set, that entire set ABCD is also an element of the set. When I ask you is 2 an element of this set, don't be confused. There is no separate number 2 listed out here as an element of the set. The elements of the set containing the sets A and B are just these two elements. So 2 is actually not an element. That's strange, right? Now it would have been true if I said that the set containing A, B, C, D is an element of the set containing the set A, B, C, D and the set 2, 3, 4, 5. That would have been true. But 2 itself is not an element of that set. So what do you think about part E? We are asked if the set containing 2 is an element of the set containing the set containing 2, the set containing 3, the set containing 4, and the set containing 5. So if you said yes, you're correct. The set containing 2 is an element of this set. Now if I asked you if 2 were an element of this set, you would have to say no, it's not. Okay, the set containing 2 is an element of this set, but 2 itself is not. So what we notice 
is that as in parts D and E above, the elements of sets may be sets themselves. And notice that these set elements are still separated by commas when designated by the listing or roster method. Let's look at another example. Determine whether the element is in the set. Fill in the blank with is an element of or is not an element of to make the statement true. All right, so in part A, we have zero blank, and then we have this bold N, right? So do you remember what that bold N stands for? If you said it stands for natural numbers, you are correct. And which set is the natural numbers? Is it the set that starts with zero or the set that starts with one? If you said it's a set starting with one, you are correct. I think that comes from the fact that you can see quantities starting with one in nature, but you can't see zero. So in that sense, it's not a natural number. Zero is a whole number, but not a natural number. All right, so is zero an element of the natural numbers? No, so we would write zero is not an element of the natural numbers. Let's look at part B. We want to know is negative two an element of, and then we have this bold Q. Do you remember what Q stands for? It comes from the term quotient. Q means quotient. Q is the set of rational numbers. In other words, it's the set of numbers that can be written as fractions. And we use this set builder notation to describe how to construct these fractions by making a ratio, hence the word rational, out of integers as long as q is not zero because we're not allowed to divide by zero. So the question is, can the number negative two, can that be written in the form of p over q? If you said yes, you're correct because you can write any integer as a fraction by just putting it over one. So yes, negative two is an element of the rational numbers. Now let's look at part C. In part C, we have zero and the empty set. I know that looks a little bit like a zero, but it's supposed to be the empty set. This symbol can also be written as just the braces without anything in them because it represents the empty set. So is zero an element of the empty set? The answer is no, because nothing is an element of the empty set. There's nothing in the empty set. So zero is not an element of the empty set. Let's look at part D. Here we're asking if 1,500 is in the set of all X, such that X is a positive whole number. Whole number. So the whole numbers, which we can denote with a bold W, are the numbers that start with zero, one, two, three, and so on. The positive whole numbers refers to everything after zero because zero is neither positive nor negative. It's right in the middle. So the positive whole numbers would be one, two, three, and so on. You could also refer to these as the natural numbers. What we're being asked though is, is 1,500 an element of that set? So what do you think? If you said yes, you're correct, because remember these ellipses indicate the pattern continues, and since there's nothing at the end of the ellipses, it means it continues forever. This is an infinite set, and it definitely includes the number 1,500. So we would put is an element of the set. Now let's look at part E. Three is an element or is not an element of the set of all numbers x such that x is in the natural numbers and x is greater than or equal to three. Okay, so there's a lot to kind of unpackage here. So let's take a look. So first of all, n means natural numbers. And we know the natural numbers, as we mentioned above, begins one, two, three, and continues with that pattern forever. All the numbers X in this set are in the set of natural numbers, but they also have the characteristic that they're greater than or equal to three. Greater than or equal to three would leave out which two numbers? The one and the two. So we are talking about a set that starts with the number three and then four and then five and then so on. So is three an element of this set? Yes, it is. It's right there at the beginning. 
I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video. You can also follow the links to the playlist for the set theory chapter videos or subscribe to my channel, Miss Hearn Mathematics.